Hey guys, welcome back to the Rusty Beauty's Garage. This is the second episode of the J-Type Overdrive overhauling. And if you remember, we took apart the overdrive, but we figured out the main problem was actually in the transmission. So it's uh, a week later, I guess, or a little bit more than a week later, and we received all the parts and I, over and I already overhauled the transmission. I told you uh, the problem was in the spindle and uh, counter shaft but while we were there we also changed the we also changed these thrust washers because they were damaged as well and we also changed the synchro rings we changed the gear for the reverse because this is chipped here so and these switches because i'm not sure they are in a good shape they i tested them and they make contact but when you shake them a little bit, they don't. So I just changed them with new ones because we want to make sure that the overdrive works when we want it to work and then doesn't work when we don't want it to work. Because sometimes, you know, if the switch gets stuck and you go in neutral or you go in reverse, but the switch is still making contact, then you're in trouble. You can have the overdrive engaged without knowing and go in reverse, so you know that causes big trouble. Oh, and I also changed the three O-rings here on these three shafts because it was leaking from here. So it is brand new transmission now. There were a few other things that uh, were funny. Here inside we had two seals, one after the other, which I don't know if it's helpful or it's harmful. So I only put one when I assembled it. There were no copper washers here. This is important because these four holes here are through and go inside the transmission. So it's possible that it leaks from there. Anyways, this cover is not assembled completely because I still need to take it out when I'm assembling the overdrive to the transmission. So I just put the bolts there. So the transmission is finished. And like I told you, I didn't film it because I have another series about overhauling a transmission, the R6 transmission. So I'm gonna put a link here again for you you can go and see it if you want, if you're interested in the transmission overhauling. But this series is for the overdrive only, for the J-Type overdrive. And therefore, without further ado, let's get crack a locking on assembling the overdrive. Okay, so we have a bunch of new parts from Moss Motors and they're mainly o-rings and seals and springs and the filter the pressure filter and gaskets i also got a non-return valve but again nothing major all the major components were good we're just changing seals and gaskets and here is our overdrive taken apart completely most of the little parts are here so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna clean everything we're gonna arrange it nicely on the table and we're gonna start assembling. Exciting! All right, it took me an hour, but everything is nice and clean. All the gasket surfaces are clean. Everything has been washed with brake cleaner. Normally I wouldn't do that, but for bearings, for example, but because of all the metal shavings that were inside, they're still on the filter, if you can see here. So I didn't clean this filter because this is going to be replaced. We have a new one for that. But because of those metal shavings, I had to wash all the bearings. So now when we are assembling it, we have to apply generously our assembly loop. This is transmission assembly loop, so that's why it's blue. So these are all the parts here in no particular order. I just wash them and arrange them here. And now we have a setup here on this table. We have the menu open here, electronic format of the menu. So we can uh, refer to it a little bit. On this table, we're gonna do the assembly. We're gonna assemble component by component. So we're gonna take only the parts that we need from there. We're gonna put them here. We're gonna assemble them. Here we have all the new parts that we ordered. <laughs> Thank you. And to be able to identify them, because O-rings, for example, it just says O-ring on some of them, you see? 
to be able to identify them. We have the Moss Motors website open over there on the screen. So when we want to replace this O-ring, for example, we, we can click on it. That tells us that this is an O-ring part number 52330. And then we can go in the box and find the O-ring 52330. wherever that is hmm. do we have it i'm pretty sure we ordered i'm pretty sure we have all the o-rings because um there was nothing on back order wow now it's gonna turn out that we don't have them here they are all right we're gonna begin with uh, assembling the annulus and the uh, rear housing so i'm just going to show you how everything goes together but then we're going to go in different order so first the drive gear as we can see here the drive gear goes with the embossed part towards the bearing then we have this spacer and at the end the bearing and the seal on top that's how everything goes together, but of course, that happens inside the housing. So, in the first place, we have to press the bearing here, install the seal, and then push this part onto this part. But, but before we do that, of course, like I said, we're gonna apply a generous layer of lubrication. Assembly lube, or this is called actually assembly goo. The bearing doesn't need to be packed with grease because here we're gonna have oil later. We're just concerned about the initial, initial spinning when it starts spinning until the pump builds up pressure and spreads oil all over the place. That's the only moment that we're worried about. It's not like the wheel hubs where we rely on this grease to stay there for a long time and, and keep lubricating our bearing now this is interesting how does this gear stay there it's just friction huh. i never told about that so this gear is just pressed between the between the the two bearings i guess that's how it stays there there's no key or anything that's interesting well, anyways, that's how it is. So let's go on the press and press this bearing in and the seal, and then I'm gonna press this in. Okay, so here I'm not expecting way too much force, but still we have to be very careful not to crack the housing. The other thing is we don't wanna press on the inner racer in order to push the outer racer in we need to push on the outer racer only and that's why i found this uh, sleeve for uh, clutch release bearing which fits exactly inside here so with that we can press only on the outer racer of the bearing and in order to make this level we're gonna put this plate here and we're gonna go slowly to see if it is gonna level itself. We need to go until it bottoms up, which it's not yet. Okay. I just don't want to force it, you know, because I don't want to crack the housing. Okay, I think now it's bottomed. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of grease from the bearing just to lubricate the outside of the seal so we can slide it nicely. It goes with the open end towards the inside 
This is what stops the oil from going out, so that's how it goes. We can use this plate again. And from here, we need to go further in. I didn't show you that, but inside the bore has two different diameters. For the diameter for the bearing is a little bit smaller, and the diameter for the seal is a little bit uh, bigger, which creates a step on the side of the bore. So we need to press the seal all the way to that step. I guess we're gonna feel it. Okay, so this is assembled. Now let's bring the annulus and press this housing on it. Okay, so here's our annulus and I built a pedestal for it here, which, which hits it like this. We don't want to put it on its face because at some point the housing is going to bottom up too here. So we need a little bit of space here. Just making sure we have the bearing, we have the gear and we have the spacer. We have this bearing inside, which now we're trying to push onto this surface. I think I, I got lucky. I shouldn't have put the seal, the seal yet because uh, that could have created me troubles, but I am lucky I found this, uh, what is it, 32 millimeter socket that fits right inside the seal nicely so now we're pushing on the inner racer of the bearing because that's what goes on the annulus right chef tash is always making fun of me for building all kinds of stacks here to make everything work oh now from here we're gonna go gently if we feel too much pressure we're gonna stop but we need to bottom it we need to push it all the way in because like we already figured out the speed of gear is held only by the pressure between the two bearings that's weird okay That's quite a bit of pressure. And no, the shaft didn't hit my socket. I already checked my socket is deep enough, so it doesn't hit here. So I guess that's it. Okay, so this is assembled now. And next we have a thrust washer there that goes over there. We're gonna stick it later with some of the goo. Then we have the unidirectional clutch, which, which we still have to assemble, which goes in this orientation. Then we have an oil thrower or oil catcher or whatever. And then we have this circlip. Just telling you, so if I forget something, you should remind me. But first we need to assemble our unidirectional clutch. And this is a lot of fun. So. What I've done in the past for my A-type overdrive rebuild, I made this too myself. So Jed Matley, everybody knows Jed Matley, he sent me a picture of his tool with some measurements and based on that I made my own tool and it worked great, but that was before the era of the 3D printers. About a year ago, I guess, somebody from YouTube, like one of you guys, based on my video, he 3D printed this and he sent me one so I can have it. So thank you so much. So let's use this one, of course. And this one was for A-type and this one again, it says that it is for A-type overdrive, but I believe the size is the same. So that's how it should work. So why do we need a two to assemble it? Because there's a spring also inside, but this is just for demonstration purposes. This is how it goes with this uh, notches here, they need to match these tabs there, like this, of course, with the spring inside. And then we have to put all the rollers around it, like this, like all 12 of them. 
and then use one finger for each roller and use all 12 fingers and then put that inside this opening here. Of course, I'm joking. I know that you don't have 12 fingers. That's why we use these two. You can also use rubber band. There are people sometimes, I've heard all kinds of stories. People use rubber bands. So they put it like this. They put a rubber band around and they pull a little bit. They put one of the, one of the rollers, then they pull another part of the rubber band, put another roller, etc., etc. There are many ways, but this is the easiest way. If you have access to 3D printer, you can print out one. I'll give you the measurements. Yes, you're right. Okay, so without further ado, let's start assembling it. So, so we take this spring and we need to put it in this direction inside. There's a little hole here, which we need to put this in. And this end goes into this hole right here. So that's how it goes. It doesn't go this way, it goes this way. Also the direction of this end of the spring is self-explanatory, right? So this needs to go into this hole like this. And that's how the spring goes. Now we need to find this hole, put it here inside. Now we need to put them together and we need to turn it so the tabs in the back come on like this so the tabs in the back fall into the place spring loaded in counterclockwise direction so if i push it there it brings it back so that's how it needs to be so let's put it in the cage but i will start with the roller that's opposite to this end of the spring which goes into the inner member because if we put a roller here that's going to push the inner member that way and the spring is going to come out so this is what i'm talking about you see this is where the spring goes into the member so we need so we need to start with the opposite the roller so the member is pushed so the inner member is pushed against the spring so we're gonna line up one of the holes here with our two hole and we can go from there turn it and install the next one turn it and install the next one so I can actually do that now I can turn it more I'm gonna put a few rollers on this side as well because and that's gonna keep it in place. Ah. One here. Okay, and now I just need to keep it down. So I inspected all the rollers in the previous episode, made sure that they're not damaged. Now you see it's unidirectional clutch. I can't turn it back. I need to turn it back a little bit to reach that, but I can't, so we're gonna... <laughs> okay. So we're gonna keep going only in this direction. Okay, so once you center it with a few rollers, it works great. Okay, that's it. Now it's assembled. Now let's put it in place, but first we shouldn't forget the trust washer. So a little bit of grease there. The trust washer is double-sided, so it doesn't matter in what direction it goes. Now we're gonna put lots of glue here for the bearings not to roll dry. And now we have to be careful though not to drop the inner member down. So we flip it around and we have to push with something on the tabs. You know, if we, if we push the 
inner member down, it might come out. So we need to push on the tops of the cage. And once we feel that half of it is down, it's easy. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna demonstrate how it works, but first I'm gonna put the oil catcher or thrower so it doesn't go anywhere. The third clip as well. I hope this clip, this particular clip is nice and clear. Even though my videos are HD, I switched this clip to be 4K so I can zoom in if I need to. Okay, so you see how it can turn in this direction, but if you force it in the other direction, it can't go. It just can't. That's how it is designed, because I didn't show you on the inner member, but the inner racer has like ramps, like 12 ramps. So when you turn it this way, it faces the ramps and it just pushes them around and it turns. But when you turn it this way, all the rollers are climbing those 12 little ramps and as it's climbing them, it expands and just locks and it doesn't turn in the other direction. Anyways, this is done. So, like I said, you can print your own tool, you can make it. I just took a piece of pipe with two and a half inch inner diameter and I glued it literally to another piece of plastic and that's how I made this too. Or you can even try and use a rubber band, but I think it's gonna be tricky. I've never tried. So A or J type. Works for bots. Okay, so now that this assembly is assembled, we're gonna put it to the side and we're gonna grab our next victim, which is the hub of the cone clutch. And this is where we had a little issue. We have a little bit of dented corners here. So our sun gear didn't fit nicely. I mean, so we need to clean them a little bit. I'm gonna take a file and I'm gonna just file them a little bit. Okay, so I just filed a little bit the edges, like literally the corners, and now it can slide easy. So let me wash it again with brake cleaner. I'm gonna blow our table here. Okay. Don't lose any parts. We need them all. Now I can push this bearing here, but first we're gonna lubricate it, of course, at least in the back, because we're not gonna have access after. And we have to push it here all the way, which we can do on the press. We can use our pedestal again here that we made. And now we have to push again only on the inner racer, like this, with this pipe. So we're pushing on the inner racer because that's what we want to fit. Okay, until it bottoms out. Now we can put also on this side a little bit of grease or goo. And then we can put our circlip. We need to make sure that it is inside the groove. Yes. If it spins, then it's inside. There's no way that it's not inside. And then we can put our sun gear, put a little bit of lube inside actually on the outside of the gear it goes
goes from this side. Now it travels nicely. You see, before I had, like, I had to actually hammer it out, and it has its own circlip. Okay, so this is done, and now I think, let's see what the manual says. Okay, so we're not installing the planet carrier yet, according to the manual. We're installing the two pistons. So this body, I blew through each and every hole with uh, air gun. I, I washed it with uh, brake fluid multiple times, and I'm pretty sure that it is pretty clean. So now we can put a little bit of lubricant here on the piston bores. And we're gonna change the O-rings on the pistons. So this is where we go to the Most Motors website. So this is the piston, this is its O-ring. The O-ring is 290940. There you go. 290940. So let's take out the old ones. They're pretty hard. Well, they're still stretchable, but pretty hard. So bring the new one in. A little bit of grease here as well, and this is how they go. Okay. And next, according to the manual, we should install the solenoid with the operating valve, which goes into this hole. Before we install it, though, we're gonna change the O-rings. This washer, unfortunately, wasn't available on most motors, so we're gonna have to reuse it. But I don't have troubles with reusing copper washers. They usually seal. So, this is an old one. This is an old one. So these two O-rings are the same. We checked the solenoids in the last video. We powered it up and it did its job. The shaft inside is moving, so that's good. And now with the washer there, we're gonna put it inside. Now this takes one inch wrench, but my one inch wrench is much thicker than this gap here, so that's why I made this two in the previous video which now allows me to tighten it nicely. Refit the solenoid control valve, refit the pressure filter. For the pressure filter, we need the actual filter, a washer, which originally was aluminum, but now they sell you a fiber washer. And we have our plug, and also my homemade tool that I made in the last video for the cup so we can tighten it, but you can buy cheaply a tool that is adjustable. This one is not adjustable, but whatever. I needed it immediately, so I made it. So the filter goes here. It is has no direction. That's how it goes. That's where the washer fits around it. And then our cup. No lubrication needed there. Okay, we're gonna tighten these at the end, all three of them. We're gonna put it on the vise and we're gonna tighten them easy. Okay, so for this next step, we're gonna assemble in the center hole here, the oil pump and the non-return valve on top of the pump. So for this part, what we need is the plunger, which is attached on this 
I don't know, cam follower, maybe I should go with, I don't know. So that's the plunger of the pump. That's the body of the pump. So that's how the oil pumping happens. On top of the pump, we have the non-return valve with a spring and the bowl. And when I looked at the old one, I don't know if you can see very well, but this is the old, the body of the old non-return valve. I think there's little like dents inside. So I decided to buy a new kit. This is a whole kit. So it is the body, the spring and the bowl. But if you're not using a new one, here's where you can make a mistake because inside the overdrive, we have two of these little springs and two of these bolts. For the non-return valve, we have the longer spring and the smaller bowl. And for the other valve, which is lubricating valve, uh, it, goes, it goes into this hole. That's, that uses the bigger bowl and the smaller spring. So don't get confused with that. I'm not gonna use the old bow and the old spring, so I'm gonna put them away for now. And these I'm gonna put away for later. I'm not gonna use this. We're gonna use this new kit. And also there are two O-rings. One O-ring goes here on the valve body. It is number 290915. And the other O-ring, you can very easily miss it, but it's important, it goes here on the cover. Go away. So let's change the O-rings first. Okay, so now we can push the oil pump inside here the body but we have to be very careful with the direction because it has this hole which allows the oil to travel and it needs too much an opening here at the side so it has a flat part here at the bottom which is at the same direction as the opening so I thought that we would be able to put the pump only in one direction, but actually we can put it in any direction we want. But this part will stick out from there underneath, so we're gonna be able to see in what direction it is. So that's the right direction. So we're just gonna tap it gently with something, I don't know what. Okay, bottomed. And now we can put some lubrication on the plunger and that's how it goes with the tapered part up because this is where the cam fits that drives the pump up and down. Okay. So that's how the oil pumping happens. But to make sure that it doesn't come back when the plunger goes down, we need to fit our non-return valve. So that's the new one. So we have the body falls right there. Then we have the bow in the hole. Then here we already changed the O-ring. We put the string, but so in order to not to fall while we flip it upside down, we're gonna put some grease on it. So now there's no way that we're gonna lose it. It's still there, right? And now we're gonna tighten this. So this cover and this cover have O-rings. This cover doesn't have O-ring. So now let's see what we need for the relief valve. Okay, so next we're gonna do the relief valve and dashboard assembly. So for this, we need these parts. So we have the dashboard with a sleeve and inside we have a cup. So this we never took apart and we are not taking apart. That's how they go together. We have the, that's the actual valve and that's the valve piston. We have a spring that goes in between. That's how they fit. That's how they fit together. 
and we have the cover. So that's the whole assembly, that's how it goes. But we have to change some O-rings too. So here we have two O-rings, one is the small one is 290935. Then we have the bigger one here and the one on the sleeve for the dashboard. It is 520340. We have two of these, of course, because here and here the ring is the same. And the one on the cover is 520360. And now let's install everything inside. Just gonna put a little bit of grease on the bore so everything slides nicely down there. So first we put the valve body. Needs to be pushed in until it bottoms out. Next is the piston. Again, we're gonna put a little bit of lubrication on it. So it needs to fit inside the hole of the valve. like this, then the spring goes inside, like this, and then the dashboard with the cup pointing down and this part up towards the cover. Supposedly the cover is going to press everything down. And now, like we said, let's go on the vise and tighten these three cups permanently. Okay, so remember this uh, other spring and bowl that we spoke about? So this is where they go. First the bowl, then the spring, and there's this little cup that is actually cut. So this is called a lubrication valve for the relief valve. So I don't know what exactly it does, but that's how it goes together. So, so like I said, this is the bigger bowl with the smaller spring. All right, and now we can assemble our sump here with our sump filter, which goes like this. But before I put the filter in, we're gonna install our gasket. So we're gonna put some gasket maker here, and then we're gonna put the sump. The sump has a magnet at the bottom that collects all your sludge. Well, apparently it doesn't hold too much, but there was a lot of um, metal shavings here that I cleared. As gasket maker, I use this, well, you can barely see it, but it's called Aviation Forma Gasket by Permatex and I'm not affiliated with them, but I love this product, so I use it all the time. But like I said, I'm not affiliated, I buy it with my own money. So, this bottle is almost empty, so I'm gonna put it on its side. install it so now we shouldn't forget our some filter it goes into this hole the gasket in the right orientation because apparently it's not symmetrical same for the cover now we have these star washers here And this is the plug for this hole, which hole is a service hole. This is where you attach your pressure gauge when you do the test. So for now, we're just gonna put it here loosely because we're gonna have to remove it anyways and test the overdrive at some point. Hopefully that's gonna be tomorrow.
Okay, next let's install the ring, the brake ring here. And this ring is directional. Of course, you can't install it the wrong way anyways because the roads won't match, but it is it has a direction because it's tapered. Here inside, this is not a cylinder, so that's how it goes. And the gaskets that go on top and the bottom are different. And I believe the diameter, the inner diameter is different. Yeah, so you see this won't fit on this side. This was this will only fit on this side. Like this. And this is the one for the other side. So if we compare them. See the one on the bottom has a smaller inner diameter. Okay. So for now we're just gonna put the one with the smaller diameter, which was this one I believe. Yes. We're not gonna put the other one on top because we're not gonna assemble it yet, but we want to put the brake ring there. So we have gasket maker on the body, we have gasket maker on both sides of the gasket and gasket maker on the brake, on the brake ring. So we can tap it in now. The other one we're going to do later because we need to assemble some other parts together now. Okay, for the next step, it is recommended that you put this assembly in a vise. I don't want to move. I'm going to figure out another way. Eh, kind of. Let's put some lube inside here, everywhere, in the annulus. Then we're going to take the planet carrier, lubricate it as well and we can drop it inside the annulus. Now for the ATAP overdrive, there is a direction here for all the planets. There's a dot that you need to position pointing out and then you drop it in. For J-type, there's no such thing. So that's good. You can just drop it there. Then we can drop the sliding member, matching the sun gear with the planets. And now we have to put our springs here, but I had the feeling that these springs were a little bit too loose and I bought new ones and sure enough, there's your difference. So the old springs are a little bit too short, so good thing we bought new ones. The old ones are gonna go for scrap. Well, nothing goes to scrap in my garage. <laughs> I keep things and I use them on the press or like I always find use for old parts. And now here, the last thing is this gasket and we can assemble the two parts. All right, and now we can put these together. So we have gasket maker on both parts of the body and both sides of the gasket. So now as we're sliding it in, we have to also match these roads to go into the holes there so that's tricky okay so now this long road here can reach i don't know if you see it and here these are the two top ones so these top ones take a copper washer because the road goes through the gallery so only the top ones the other four take normal washer normal lock washer and here i don't have room for a lock washer yet but i'm just gonna put the nut for now to pull it down and then when we put more nuts i'm gonna undo the nut and i'm gonna put the lock washer
So this is how the bridges go. And these are the original nuts. And I bought new ones, like these are nylock nuts. I think these, the original ones, are much better. They, they have some weird spring inside or something, so I trust that these are actually better than the uh, new ones. So we're just gonna put them back in. The bridges don't have orientation, even though I can see a mark from the piston here, but that's just discoloration. It's not uh, indent or anything. And that was it for the actual overdrive. So, so what's left is the adapter plate that needs to go here, the angle drive and the speedo gear here with the o-ring. So we're gonna change the o-rings and the seal and uh, we're gonna install them. Okay, let's install the adapter plate now. It goes like this. I'm not sure if this gasket fits both ways. It fits this way, but it has these notches here that... These notches here, they're not symmetrical. And I'm not sure why. Here, the notches are for the blocks. So. So the last thing is to install the speedo gear, but before that we're gonna change the seal here and the o-ring. So we have a new seal. There you go. We're gonna tap the new seal in uh, again with the open part down with the socket. Change the o-ring as well. There's so many o-rings in this overdrive. So now the gear goes first. Make sure that it meshes with the driving gear inside. And then this body goes all the way in. Then we have the angle drive. It goes like this. And then we have this little bracket that holds them in place. So they don't come out. And a set screw. And last but not least, our flange, which again we're gonna put a little bit of lubrication here so we don't ruin the seal. It goes all the way in, a washer and a lock nut. And with that our overdrive is assembled. What's left now is to install it on the transmission and test it. And yes, you're right, I forgot something this little ground cable or earth cable that grounds the solenoid so we can put power on the other side and that's gonna activate it so I put that as well okay so the transmission is on the bench and I removed the top cover again because it's in our way and now we have to make sure that we have the cam here if we forget that our pump is not gonna move up and down so the cam is in place and uh, before we actually put the gasket and mount it permanently, let's test fit it to make sure that it still fits inside. Now this normally should fit easier than the A-type, 
for the A-type we need lots of playing here. We need a dummy shaft to align all the splines and everything. On the J-type there is no such thing. It aligns on its own. So there you go. It fits well. So let's put the gasket. Okay, we have gasket maker on the surface of the transmission. We have gasket maker on both sides of the gasket, which is here already. We have gasket maker on this surface. The cam is here. The screw down there is tight, so the shafts won't come out. And we're, now we can put it on permanently. There you go. Hey, I'm in the wrong channel, apparently. <laughs> well, no, I'm still in my channel. So we have a visitor, the famous Chef Tash. So he came to pay a visit, but um, that doesn't stop us from working. So I put it together. All the bolts are now tight. And what's left is to pour the oil and put the cover on and test it. But that's gonna happen in the next video. We're gonna call it a video here, so you can see how to assemble it, and then we're gonna make a separate video about the testing. So, like I said, that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting and subscribing. Thanks for supporting the channel on Patreon and via PayPal. That's really highly appreciated, guys. Thank you very much. If you wanna see details about how you can support the channel, you can go to the link in the description and pretty self-explanatory so if you like the channel and you want me to make more videos like that you can help me by supporting me a little bit financially so that's gonna be appreciated so thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next video in which we're gonna test this baby and we will see if we actually done something so thanks for watching bye